What's going on boys and girls? My name is Michael SK and welcome back to the Labyrinth of Grisaya. So, the last episode got a little confusing towards the end on trying to figure out what Asako's occupation was. But before that, she was basically training Yuji, I guess you can say in a way. Uh, having him run, having him fight, and having him learn, I, I guess you could say. So, that's, that's pretty much what the last episode was. It was 35 minutes of... Pretty much just that. I may be missing something. I'm not really sure. But now we're in the cocoon of Capri 7. Let's, uh, let's continue on. We're actually in the middle of some context. I had to end the last episode in the middle of some context because uh, I was running a few minutes over the 30 minute mark, which is kind of like where I want to be. So we are in the middle of some context, but that's all right. We'll. We kind of ended it on a uh, on a good question that Yuji is being asked, so hopefully he gives a uh, very great answer. Doing bad things is evil. It's simple as that. Yeah, that's right. My big sister did that for me. Kazuki always had the answer for me whenever I needed one. おい、おい。お前の姉ちゃんが正しいと言えばそれが正義なのか?お前の姉ちゃんが狂ってたらどうすんだよ。それにお前の姉ちゃんはもう死んだ。どうすんだお前。おい、おい。そんな泣きそう
そんな面倒な職場だからこそ社員はみんなパチンコやお馬さんやお船や自転車で息抜きをするんだ。Wait, was that whole long winded explanation just one big excuse? うるせえ、お前は私の女房か玉遊びくらい好きにやらせるわ。Alright! <笑> Even after explanation, I still didn't really know what Circe was. It would be some time before I learned the details. After the old army's Nakano school was dismantled, a new Fuchu based intelligent agency was created to fill the void, eventually, growing into a kind of secret police force under direct ministry control. Later, its headquarters were relocated to Ichigaya. A word that's become synonymous with the organization for those who deal with it. If you're just looking at the basic facts, it seems like a respectable enough government organization, but in reality, it's a suicide battle, battle lion? I have no idea what that is. Mostly made up of expendable personnel with skeletons in their closet. <laughs> カゾクなし、未来なし、生産な過去は山盛り。刑務所に入れて無駄飯を食べさせるぐらいなら、使い潰すつもりでただ同然でリクルートできる人材をあえて選ぶ。歪んだナイフも直せば使える。刺さって折
ディスク組の私だって絶対に安全ってわけじゃないわ。No, you're safe. I wouldn't let anything happen to you. <laughs> oh shit. As long as I'm alive, you're safe, JB. What's so funny? Yeah, go me, go me. Mozu to Mukasini, Mada, Atasta Sakoga, Yogo Sitsuni Takoro. Mataku Onajikoto, Asakoni, Yuaretano, Moidesta. You're in an orphanage. Now we know that. Sitsuno, Tonadesra, Sino de Kinakata, no toji. But as you are Asako da Kio Sinji Tita. So, Asakoni Shiro, Hanatani Shiro. なんで私こんな面倒なやつを真面目に面倒を見てるんだろうって思ってたけど<笑>そういうことか You've done a lot for me and that's why as long as I can protect you I don't regret becoming the person I am today <笑>やばい私今この子にプロポーズされたら絶対に断れない Why are we hearing this? You all right there, JB? <laughs> God damn it. I think that's the first time in this series that we've actually heard someone's thoughts, besides Yuji's, of course. We were up to the point where Asuka told me about her job. Back to the past. It wasn't as if Asuka was particularly secretive. In the first place, I said that wrong. But after that conversation about her job, she stopped hiding things from me entirely. One morning, she actually began to do maintenance on her rifle right in front of me, while puffing away at a cigarette, no less. Yeah. You smoke while you're doing maintenance on your gun? ベラベラ喋って大事な武器に唾を飛ばして錆びさせないようにするために加えてんだ。You seem to be talking anyway. 酒を飲みながらやってない分まだマシだろ ?That doesn't make it any better.Well, I guess that's true.Anyway, I'm a little surprised you use such a beat up old rifle. 私はアメリカで仕事をしていた当時からずっとこれだ。設計は古いが信頼性は高い。いいかユージ覚えておけ戦場での新兵器の続行みだ実績があって使い慣れた武器が一番いい That makes a lot of sense この M40A1 ってやつはマリンコなら誰もが一度は経験する銃だ言ってみりゃはめ慣れたマッコが一番具合がいいってことだわかるか That's uh That's a lovely way to put that Not in the slightest. <sighs> no, no, no. Let's just be curious our entire life. Yeah, maybe next time. Hell yeah, boy. Yeah, they taught me the basics at Oslo school. Asuka was probably only half serious. I think it was just another of her whims. I didn't give it too much thought myself either. I suppose it seemed like another form of recreation. A way to kill some time, nothing more. Oslo didn't like guns very much, so they'd never been a major focus of my education. But I did remember that, based on my limited experience, I wasn't half bad when it came to sharpshooting. よし、標的は前方三百。岩場に潜んだ三平。見えるか？呃、three hundred。For a training of this sort in such a heavily forested area, one hundred meters would be the standard distance. And for newcomers with limited experience, you'd almost always start off at twenty-five. Three hundred was beyond absurd. It felt like she'd set this up for me to play around, assuming I couldn't hit the target either way. That condescending attitude kind of ticked me off. 300 ahead isn't specific enough. Give me an. as. as. I don't know what the fuck that is. 
Raising an eyebrow, Asuka looked down at the watch of her left wrist and checked the bearing of my target. Vector, zero, four, five. Code 158. You have one? Wait, what? Ugh. What the fuck? I'll pass. Didn't know those existed. With due north as my zero point, I turned the barrel 45 degrees clockwise. Since my or since the target was approximately 300 meters away, I'd only been moving the gun a few centimeters from this point. Searching for the rocky area where I'd find my target with my left eye, I soon located it and immediately pushed the right eye to the scope. Or pushed my right eye to the scope. A few careful twists of the zoom ring brought my target into focus. A beer can Asuko had emptied not long ago, perched demurely on top of a huge boulder. To the naked eye, it was a nearly imperceptible I don't even know what the fuck that word is, speck. But through the scope, I could read the brand name printed on its side. Hmm. I've got it. Okay. One shot for starters. The instant I brought my finger to the trigger, I pulled my eye away from the scope. As I applied pressure with my entire right hand, the trigger scraped against the sear, releasing the hammer at the let off point. The bullet that burst out of the rifle's barrel flew well wide off the mark. I saw a small cloud of dust rise where it landed, short of the target and slightly to the right. <laughs> Peering through a spotting scope, Asuko cackled at my failure. I found myself pouting slightly. This thing isn't properly aligned. I'll get it next time. Ooh, a prize! Could it be another dog? And can we not name it after, like, a human male? <sighs> Squeezing my eyes tightly shut to stretch the muscles that supported my eyeballs, I breathed deeply in and out, in and out. Focusing on the steady beating of my heart, careful not to disrupt its rhythm. I pressed my eye to the scope once more. The instant my eyes settled against the rubber cup, I could feel my soul leave my body and soar to the target 300 meters ahead of me. A quiet wind was blowing. As I lay there, feeling it against my skin, the air seemed to take on tinges of color. Before long, I could see its flow, its eddies. It was as if the can was right in front of me, inches from my nose. All I had to do was move my hand, and I could brush it with my fingers. No need to hit my target, I'd just touch it. The bullet in that rifle's barrel was an extension of my fingers, and I was going to touch that empty beer can. All I had to do was calmly extend my hand. After all, it was sitting right in front of me. Easy enough. With a reflexive twitch of my fingertip, I found the trigger, then gently squeezed it once more. There was no need for prayers. As soon as I touched that trigger, I knew this one was a hit. Hit. Elimination of the target verified. Although I'd lined up the shot more on instinct than anything else, it seemed to have landed dead center, peering through the scope, I watched the beer can fly off the boulder and out of sight. What's my prize? I hadn't fired a gun in quite some time. It definitely wasn't an unpleasant feeling. The sound and feedback didn't really excite me either. If anything, I felt calmer with every shot. Every ripple of emotion in my mind slowly faded away, leaving it as tranquil as a pool of still water. Skilled snipers sometimes come to think of their rifle as a part of their own bodies, but for me, it was kind of the opposite. Rather than the gun becoming a part of me, it felt like I was becoming part of the gun. 
I was just one piece of a cold metal machine, a simple mechanism that aimed a rifle and pulled the trigger. The simplicity of it was addictive. The difference between a hit and miss felt surprising in its clarity. After that day, I began to carry Asako's rifle with me on my daily morning run. Let's go, John! Hell yeah! A gun against my shoulder, a dog at my side, I ran around the wooded mountain. I remember Asako laughing and saying that I looked like some sort of fr frontiersman. Of course, this was all just a game. In the middle of my run, I stopped to give John her breakfast. And when she was finished, I hung the empty can of dog food from a tree with a string. After that, I ran a decent distance away, found what felt like an appropriate point, and immediately assumed a prone firing position there. Ready, John? I'm gonna fire. Heeding my warning, my dog brought her front legs together and lowered herself flat to the ground. That's a smart-ass dog! Bringing the empty dog food can into my crosshairs as it swayed in the breeze, I quietly steadied my breathing. When the gunshot finally rang out, John reacted with a visible flinch. Alright. I'd made it into a sort of fortune-telling game. When my shot landed on the target, that meant I'd have a lucky day. One shot every morning, I kept it up for quite a while. After a few days, I started varying my targets and experimenting with different distances, but found myself getting a little bored. Then I hit on the idea of coming up with more troublesome challenges. I'd take off the scope and lined up my shot using only instinct and my naked eyes or send a can floating down a stream and try to pick it up or try to pick it off in motion or try to shoot a static object while running with the rifle against my shoulder. It didn't matter if it was raining or windy, I stuck to the routine. One day, one shot, one hit. My life on the mountain wasn't exactly eventful. This game had become my only real source of amusement. And before too long, Asako made good on her promise and bought me a toy. Oh great. She bought him a gun. I'm servicing it after every shot, you know. It's so obvious, it kind of reminds me of the Yuji Makina deal. Asuka jerked her chin to indicate a sizable PP resin case sitting imposingly on top of the table. I spun the dials as Asuka told me to, released the push lock, and gingerly opened the lid of the case. Inside, I found what looked like a brand new sniper rifle sitting snugly on a bed of shock-absorbing foam. What's this? Wow, Yuji, I wonder! M24. SWS. Okay, I guess he was asking for the specifics. My bad, guys. Sitting nestled in its case, it didn't look particularly different from Asako's M40A1, but when I picked it up in my hands, I found it was noticeably lighter than the rifle I'd been using before. On closer inspection, I found it also had a long bolt handle designed to provide highly reliable feeding and a modified fluted barrel that both reduced the gun's weight and would help it stay cooler while firing. As instructed, I took an upright firing stance, brought the stock to my shoulder, and pulled the handle. Considering how light this thing is, it's well put together. It feels really solid. It seems like there's a lot of fancy features, too. Wasn't this expensive? Fair enough, I guess. Okay. I guess I understand what you mean, but considering I was just going to use it for my daily can shooting game, this really seemed like a bit much. Okay, 
必要だからと学ぶうちにいつの間にか自分に向いた学び方を覚えるたとえそれがどんな道であろうとその道を極めた人間というのは他の何をやるにしても自分の得意分野に置き換えて物事の要領を得るそういうやつは何をやらせても卒がないわかるかいや、yeah, sort of まあ今はなんとなくでいい何年かすりゃお前にも理解できる時が必ず来る If you say so. 何も考えずにそれができるやつが天才考えた上で努力を惜しまないやつもまた天才になれる時間はかかるが諦めないことだ So wait a minute, guys who do anything without a second thought are geniuses, but guys who think hard then put in effort can become geniuses in their own right. Yeah, I, I guess anyone can be a, become a genius in their own sort of way. In a way, I can believe that. You gotta be kind of realistic. I would say, like, you can't just say, I can become the president. Yeah, I, I guess in a way you can, but in a way, you kind of have to be realistic. For example, back when I was doing cross country, the running, I was out of shape. I was not running well. But yeah, I did tell myself I can do this, and I, it was a realistic scenario. Before I knew it, months later, I was running so much faster and so much more, like, so much more, in a, a f more efficient. Yeah, sure. Much, much better than I was before, I guess you could say. And that's just being optimistic, man. You can, can definitely get better with something. You say some pretty good stuff sometimes, Asako. Can I call you master? <laughs> As long as you try not to actually kill me. Kusakabe Asako was definitely an important part of my life, but it's surprisingly difficult to define the exact role she played in it. It'd be easier to use the word guardian, but really she was so much more than that. I don't think she was a mother or a big sister to me, much less a father, so at the end of the day, if I had to pick one word, I'd say... She was my master. Oh shit, boy! JB, I told you, I'm going to get a lot of money to get a lot of money to get a lot of money. A hunting trip? Oh boy, that sounds fun. Can't wait to do it in the next episode. I mean, we're, we're pretty much out of time here. Like, we're close, but whatever. Still 35% done. Kakuna Capri 7. All good with me. Hope you guys are enjoying everything so far. If you are, leave a like, subscribe for more. And I guess I'll see you guys next time with the Labyrinth of Grisaya. Take it easy, guys.